Hi Harsha. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Today our topic is on data transformer and activities. Okay. Can we start? Yeah, we can start. Okay. First question. Can we call local variables in data transform? How to call activity from data transform? Okay. So in data transform, uh, we cannot generally define or use local variables. Usually that is not possible. Only in the activity we have an option to use local variables, but not in data transform. And if we want to use uh, activity being called from a data transform, uh, there is one OOTB function available, PX execute activity, or previously it was like PX uh, call activity. So this function when we use, we need to pass the page name and activity name as parameters. Then the activity will get called from data transform. What is the difference between append to and append and map to? Okay. So uh, in data transform, under the options we have append to and append and map to. Whenever we wanted to copy the pages from one page list into another page list, where both page lists are referring to same class, then we can use append to. Let's say we want to copy the data from one page list to another page list, the pages where both page lists are referring to different classes, then we have to go with append and map to. Okay. We'll see one scenario. Okay. Can we call same data transform in three different classes? Classes pattern will be like A dash, A dash B dash and A dash B dash C. If we check super class data transform checkbox, checked in data transform, which is on A dash B, where it will check first? See, if we are going to have the data transform in A dash class, A dash B dash class, A dash B dash C with the same name and we have selected uh, the option of check super class only on A dash B not on a dash b dash c. If the processing is begin from a dash b dash c, where the data transform is being called, but super class data transform is not being set, it will always look at a dash b dash c, it will never go above levels. That's how it works. How to call decision table in data transform? So a decision table can be called from data transform. Uh, we can use a function. Uh, the function is like a, a px evaluate decision table. So using this function, we need to pass the page name and name of the decision table. Then it is going to execute a decision table being called from data transform. Okay, we move on to activities. Okay. In activity, three steps are there. Okay. And in second step, connect rest is calling. Okay. One second step called, I don't want to wait until get the response from service. Okay. Immediately want to move to third step. Okay. How to do that? See, whenever we are calling connector rules from activities it may not be connect rest it may be even connect soap and all but there is one option at the time of calling that is run in parallel if we choose the option of run in parallel then the processing will become asynchronous means at the time of calling connect rest by using activity of connect rest step step if we choose this option a call will be made to the service whereas the process commander in the activity will proceed to the next step further without waiting for the response so we need to choose the option of run in par parallel that is going to make the processing asynchronous Okay. What is the difference between OBJ open and OBJ open by handle? Okay. So both methods, OBJ open method and OBJ open by handle method, both methods are for the same purpose of retrieving one record from the table. But when in case the developers are, are having the PYID, I mean to say like class key, then they will go for writing the activity using OBJ open method. When in case if developers are having like OBJ open by handle, I mean like a pigeon INS key value, then they go ahead and open the record by using obj open by handle method. Both methods are going to open single record, but one method is obj open is going to use class key and another method obj open by handle is going to use pgdns key value. What is the difference between obj open and obj refresh and lock? Okay, so obj open method as I have already told in the previous question, it is used to fetch single record from the table. And in the obj open method, we have an option of lock and uh, acquire lock and release on commit. See, if we are going to select the option of acquire log, if already the instance that we are trying to open by using obj open is going to throw an error message, exception will be thrown. Now, there is another method called obj refresh and log. When we use obj refresh and log, this has an internal feature like it is trying, it is going to open one record from the table, but if the record is already been locked, then this method doesn't have any impact. It will proceed forward. Suppose if the record is not locked, then it is going to refresh the page on the clipboard with the latest data by fetching and then it is going to acquire lock and proceed forward. That is how it works. Okay. How to update the case status manually by using activity? Manually in the sense we can uh, do a simple property set like 
py status work property should be assigned to some status value otherwise there is one OTB activity set status related and if you call that activity and pass the status value then update status like that if you call that OTB activity and pass whatever the status that we want then it is going to assign the status to the case in obj open method will the data be pulled always from blob call or will it be pulled from the exposit call see in case when we are using obj open it is going to always pull from the blob column usually that is what my observation Okay, what is the difference between OBJ methods and RDB methods? So the difference between OBJ methods and RDB methods in the sense there are so many differences. Uh, I'll tell you the okay, I'll tell you all the differences. Like whenever we are using OBJ methods, it is mandatory that there should be a class and table mapping. Without that, OBJ methods cannot cannot generate any queries automatically. So OBJ methods generates queries automatically where in order to generate the queries automatically it should have to know about the table names and all for that we are going to pass the class names only so that class and table mapping that is database table rule must be there when we are using obj methods in case of rdb methods we are going to call the connector scale rules and we write our own queries so when you are dealing with rdb methods it is not necessary or not mandatory to have class and table mapping when we are writing our own queries but still there is something else to look at see the way how we write queries in the connector scale rule is also matters. There are two ways we can write the query in the connector scale rule. We can write directly a pre-query in the connector scale rule or we can directly write a post-query. Pre-query means the query is going to have class names. Post-query means the query is going to have table names. See, there are some advantages of doing like this. See, pre, if you are writing pre-query in connector scale rule, then when using RDB methods, class table mapping is must. If you are writing post-query in the connector scale rule, then while using RDB methods, it is not uh, uh, mandatory to go ahead and have class and table mapping. And one more important thing is, we cannot perform all types of joins using OBJ methods. That is not at all possible. But in RDB methods, as we are using connector scale rules and we are writing our, our own queries, we can write any type of joins that, that respect to database supports. And one more key important difference is, we can call stored process from RDB methods by using in the connector scale rule but calling stored procedures all this is not possible by using obj methods and one more final difference that i know is like obj methods always retrieves the data from even blob and expose that's not a big deal but obj methods have the capability to uh, uh, to decrypt the pega provided tables and its blob content into exposed content on the clipboard onto the clipboard but rdb methods fetches the blob as blob there is no way that you can retrieve blob into decrypted format if you have to do that we need to follow another techniques on SQL and we have to implement by ourselves rdb methods works both on blob as well as exposed whereas obj methods also works both on these things but obj methods decrypts blob rdb methods are going to retrieve blob as it is as blob that is another difference next question difference between commit and obj save with right now option Okay, so in the OBJ save method, we have right now option and we can use commit method. See, both are going to perform the same. Like come, when you use right now, it will perform a commit on the table for the respect to record. Whenever you are using commit method also, it is going to do the same. But there is difference. Like whenever we use right now in OBJ save, that is specific to only one OBJ save method. I have five OBJ save methods in an activity to save the data into five different tables. And I have selected right now at the fifth step. Let's say for example, only fifth one will be committed. The remaining four will not be committed. But whereas if you are using commit method at the end, let's say five OBS saves I have added, I am using commit method at the end. Then all five OBS saves will get committed into the respect to tables from the defer queue. There is one other, another important difference that is, right now performs a commit on specific OBS save, but it cannot release the lock. Whereas commit method is going to perform a commit and then it releases the lock. That is another important difference. Okay, next question. How to validate a property which is a text to have only numbers? Yes, if you want to validate a property to have only numbers, means whenever users are going to enter the value, we need to verify to see whether only numbers are there or not there. For that, we can use edit validate rule. So in the edit validate rule, there is one OOTB edit validate rule like is number. So that is going to see all the characters in the num in that particular uh, property has only numbers. Okay, next question. When the user not able to run the activity, where can you check to identify the problem? Okay, if business users are not able to run the activities, that may be the issue with the 
privileges i i will like role to object and all in the role to object for the respect to access group in the role name and role to objects that have been added we can see whether execute activities option for the specific version uh, specific server of pega is available or not i mean available in the sense it is allowed or not so in the role to object uh, activity maybe for that particular server uh, value the execute activity is not been provided okay that's the reason they were not able to execute activity the key place to verify is uh, access role to object okay thank you for watching this video if you have any questions please post it in comment box we'll try to resolve in next videos please subscribe to harsha trainings channel and press bell icon to get latest updates thank you and next pega batch will start from july 5th and timings will be 9 am to 10 am ist